All right. Hello, everyone. This is Dave Poltorek. Um, I'm super glad to be here. I'm glad you're here. We're here to talk about Azure Storage and Layer 7 uh, load balancing. I'm here with my colleagues, Doug Fuller from Celeris, Amanda Lowry Hall, as well as Dave Murkies from Chem Technologies. Um, I'm excited because just a few short years ago, it wasn't that long ago that there was problems getting into the cloud that were sort of really big obstacles. You know, so from a technology standpoint, you had to have a lot of one-off solutions, um, you know, uh, getting, in the, getting in the storage, getting your applications over into the cloud. You couldn't move this workload. There's all these sorts of technology snags. It's very not cloudy. You know, the idea with the cloud is a snagless fabric, makes things easier, scale, et cetera. And the issue had been, um, hey, it's not so sort of snagless to move to the cloud. Um, and the second issue was not that long ago, the costs were way out of whack. You'd look at things and say, well, that's, that looks attractive. However, when I add it up, it's pretty expensive or the, 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 the charging model isn't clear. Those things have really been cleaned up in a lot, in a lot of cases. And these two cases in particular, Azure storage is ready to go right now and really is cost competitive. It's pretty amazing. You look at the store simple device. It's a no brainer. Um, that helps you get into that uh, cloud and does a lot of things automated for you. So we'll look at that. Uh, Doug's going to cover that. But first, we're going to have David from, uh, from Ken talk about their Layer 7 load balancing solutions. So let's just get into this. All right. Thanks, Dave. Um, yeah, so my name is also David, and I'm with Kemp Technologies. Uh, we are a, a Layer 7, Layer 4 application delivery uh, controller slash load balancer. Uh, and today we're going to talk about a, a couple of items, uh, mainly uh, how to load balance and benefit from uh, high availability and application delivery in the Azure cloud. Uh, some topics from the agenda today are expanding your IT platform uh, to the hybrid cloud. Uh, what are some of the features, uh, some of the benefits also of the Microsoft Azure platform? And what are some of the feature benefits of the Kemp uh, Azure Load Balancer. And we're also going to talk about high availability um, with Kemp and Azure and also some of the uh, benefits and features of Azure Storage and Store Simple. So who's Kemp? Uh, Kemp, <clears throat> we're delivering hybrid cloud solutions with the Kemp Load Loadmaster and Microsoft Azure. We're Layer 7 application delivery um, controller for Microsoft and the Azure Cloud. This is a quick snapshot of the uh, global uh, cloud market, okay? Um, it's really actually taking off, and um, we're seeing five times the growth in the overall industry, as well as uh, getting just under $100 billion in service revenue by 2016. So we're, uh, a lot of corporations, uh, whether small or enterprise level, level are actually making a, a jump or, or switch over to the hybrid platforms and cloud platforms. Now, these are some of the industry trends uh, that are driving uh, IT pressures, right? We all have mobility going on. We have apps. There's a lot of big data going on. And then, of course, uh, cloud and, and what can we really do with the cloud, the cloud piece here, right? So for mobility, uh, how can we enable employees to work from anywhere, right? You have road warriors out there. You want to make sure that they're up and connected to the resources that they need all the time, uh, regardless of where they might be located. And then from an application standpoint, how can I evolve my business apps to meet uh, new needs, right? So there's always the question of how do we scale this application or how do we scale this particular uh, solution um, in the easy format? And then of course, there's big data, right? You know, how do I help my business make faster decisions? You're collecting constant data all the time, and you're going to need to start uh, provisioning some solutions to mine through it and utilize um, the data that you're actually collecting. And finally, from cloud standpoint, uh, how can I ensure my infrastructure will scale to meet demand? And that's really um, where the cloud piece comes into play, right? Again, whether you're a small business or a large business um, growing a particular segment, the cloud will actually provide uh, on-demand infrastructure allowing you to scale with your, with your organization. Okay. Some of the scenarios that benefit from the cloud here, right? Now, these, 
these may uh, pertain uh, to you, but you know, there's quite a few reasons why an organization would want to move um, either some or all of their um, infrastructure into the cloud, right? We have on and off scenarios, right? Sometimes there's a burst in the morning or there's activity in the morning. There's no activity in the middle of the day and, and then again in the evening. So how do you benefit uh, from having that type of scenario? Well, the simple answer is just mixing with the cloud or utilizing cloud, the Azure cloud for on-demand services. Also, growing fast, right? It's always a, a good problem to have in the sense that uh, your organization is growing really fast, but how do you keep up with that that growth without, um, you know, destroying your IT budget, right? And here again is where the cloud really benefits with the on-demand scenario, uh, allowing you to either utilize uh, the cloud infrastructure or do a hybrid model and um, put some of the systems on your own premise there. Uh, we also have, sorry, we also have unpredictable demand, right? Uh, so this could just be an immediate spike. Maybe uh, you experience uh, spikes in traffic during a regular press release, right? And so for that, uh, maybe you want to spill over into the Azure cloud and those um, applications during those times. And this is really where uh, the cloud will afford you the, the ability to to use Azure during that peak session without going and adding additional servers um, and, and solutions within your on-premise network. And then, of course, there's predict predictable bursting, right? Uh, you could see some of the uh, additional scenarios would be through retail uh, or even high uh, performance computing, okay? So these could be seasonal applications. Uh, they're basically just if you have a prediction of, of speed, then you know you can always spill over into the Azure cloud with those applications. A quick uh, overview of Kemp Technologies here. Uh, you know, we're a software company, and we develop, and, or sorry, we design and develop um, load balancing and application uh, delivery controller uh, technologies, okay? One of the fastest growing ADCs on the market, in fact, we're number three uh, worldwide, and we just we have just over 20,000 uh, worldwide customer deployments, over a thousand channel partners, and we're experiencing just about 50% year-over-year growth. Okay, uh, we're also certified with Microsoft for messaging communications and Azure. Okay. And David, I, I got to tell you, one thing that I really like is that uh, um, versus your competition. Uh, you've just got a, the right kind of price points. You've got a small, medium, and large. You've got a sort of end-to-end -end solution. And uh, uh, really what they typically tend to have is uh, you know, cost prohibitive, uh, with atomic cannon to swat a fly for some of our customers. So uh, being able to have a, the right price point and entry-level solution moving all the way up through, that's that's really cool about your technology. Yeah, definitely. And, and you bring up a good point. That's actually uh, been a, a huge key to our success. Uh, we focus strictly on load balancing, and, and we know that's what we're doing, right? We don't uh, put our hands into uh, network switching and different security modules and try and sell you a, a huge all-in-one network solution. We're a pure play load balancer, and the fact that, that we focus solely on load balancing allows us to do a couple of things, right, is um, offer – Extremely good technology, right? Uh, as well as the price point. Okay, and so we p we pass that kind of savings on to the customer, and that's really where we're able to uh, come in where we do, right? And just as an, an overview of the load balancer itself, the Kemp Loadmaster, um, we actually have a whole range of deployment options for you, right? We have purpose-built hardware. Uh, and appliances. We also have our um, virtualization with Hyper-V and VMware. Uh, and then we also have uh, bare metal, right, which is a bare metal instance is simply our operating system being deployed on your existing hardware, okay? Uh, there's no middleware there, and it's not a virtual product. It's it's a full-fledged uh, Kemp Load Balancer operating system. And then, of course, we have the Microsoft Azure uh, platform. Okay, so we have four different varieties for you to choose from, and it really helps our customer base uh, and our, our current customers to really decide on 
what direction we go. We give them the ability to use a, a world-class load balancer on any type of platform they desire. So the Kemp uh, Azure Load Balancer, okay, is it's designed to run natively within the Azure infrastructure itself. If you go to your Azure account today or just the Azure store and type in Kemp Technologies, you'll see that you have the ability to go ahead and download uh, the Kemp Load Balancer for Azure, okay? This load balancer that's in, in the Azure cloud is really the same as any other product that we offer. It offers full layer seven and layer four application control. Okay, it helps customers to seamlessly move their private cloud enterprise uh, into a hybrid deployment using Azure and scale their app delivery services, right? So essentially what we're doing is if you're making a migration to the cloud, we can assist and make sure that those applications maintain 100% uptime and your organization scales without a blip. Okay. We do have a, a free version available within the Azure Store. Um, that's available to start downloading. It's a full production license. Um, there is no support included, but um, it is available for purchase later on if you do actually need it. And if you want to utilize a more powerful version of the Azure, uh, load balancer from Kemp, uh, we do have upgrade paths to get you into more um, sizable models as well. Here are some of the uh, highlighted features of the Kemp Loadmaster for Azure. Uh, it's, it's been available since June. Uh, first to market with it, we, we just came out with it. In fact, Microsoft has been blogging and tweeting about us and, and uh, really getting the word out that there's a full layer seven load balancer available for their Azure cloud. Okay, uh, we also have IPS services or intrusion prevention for an added layer of security. Um, single sign-on and pre-authentication. Uh, we do health checking for the applications, obviously to make sure that they're up and running 100% and that connections are able to uh, be completed at those services. We also have uh, resource-based traffic distribution. Um, we do support a broad range of Microsoft and custom workloads. Okay. Uh, global server load balancing is also available for the hybrid deployment. Okay. Um, essentially, with global server load balancing, we're able to uh, send traffic to a specific location based on inbound IPs. And then, of course, we also have SSL termination. Okay. And SSL termination is important simply for uh, the application acceleration or even um, at a layer seven level, you can manipulate the inbound header as well. Some common use cases with the virtual uh, Loadmaster in Azure. Uh, in this scenario, we're looking at Office 365 uh, deployed with um, ADFS. Okay, so here we're looking at on-prem and also cloud services. Okay, um, we're also supporting disaster recovery as a service, and we also provide HA workloads for um, are now that are supported in Azure, such as SharePoint and remote desktop services, um, as well as ADFS. Okay, and then we also have uh, web applications with layer seven uh, proxy needs, which um, would be the SharePoint instance there. In this, we're looking at Microsoft um, Azure as the infrastructure itself, right? So a common problem with, again, with small businesses and even some large uh, organizations is limited data center capacity, uh, slow response to changing business and capacity needs, and then requirement for on-premise cost reduction, right? Uh, a lot of, and obviously nobody wants to disrupt their applications or uh, development efforts. So this is a, these are a few problems here. Um, just name a few that, that are going on with uh, current infrastructures and growing organizations. So the solution here obviously would be to go to Azure, at least put partial, uh, part of your infrastructure into the cloud. Right, and so Azure provides a way to transition tier two and three apps to the cloud, hosted VMs, freeing on-premise resources, and then you have internal and external client access 
um, remains unchanged, right? We're simply moving uh, applications to a different location seamlessly and 100% uh, available utilizing the KIMP Azure Load Balancer. And then, of course, we have uh, the KIMP Full Layer 7 Load Balancing uh, content switching and, and reverse proxy services, right? So, again, with the reverse proxy services, um, you have full control of the inbound and outbound uh, communication with that app. Uh, in this uh, slide here, we're looking at SharePoint uh, on Microsoft Azure. Um, and, again, this is also at an infrastructure level. Okay, uh, current problem high startup cost, uh, need for comp comprehensive DR strategy, and deployment time to market, right? So in this case, um, Azure has flexible pricing, and it, it drives down the uh, total cost of, of ownership here. Uh, Azure allows for automated provisioning. It also allows for simplified uh, disaster recovery option, and it makes intranet load balancing possible for clients on the private network. In this instance, um, we talked about uh, in, in the first kind of slide for um, use cases, we talked about Office 365. And in this uh, scenario here, we're looking at ADFS and utilizing uh, Microsoft Azure. Uh, again, some of the problems um, that customers face are cost. Um, cost uh, for disaster recovery, there's potential single points of failure and there's need for multi-factor authentication and single sign-on, right? And with the uh, solution here at, at Azure, you have hosted ADFS, right? So there's resiliency for corporate data, um, for a corporate data center. You also have Kemp's um, global server load balancing capabilities, which allow for automatic request rerouting in the event of failures, okay? And then Windows Azure allows customers to safely and securely extend their corporate active uh, directory authentication environment. In this scenario, um, what we're going to do here is kind of show how the actual KIMP um, Azure Load Balancer would work in different scenarios. In this scenario, this is a cloud-only deployment, meaning all of your applications are residing in the Azure cloud, uh, and your load balancer, um, your KIMP load balancer, is also on and servicing the application servers here. So you can see that the, the client uh, makes a request to the load master and checks to see um, if the client session exists. And it simply applies the rules and sends to the appropriate server or server application. Okay. So again, uh, it's distributing the inbound connections uh, to the various applications that you have hosted directly in the cloud. Okay. In this model, this is a hybrid deployment. <laughs> the way this works is that you'll have an on-premise here, which you see on the, the right, and you have your cloud infrastructure here on the left. And essentially, when the clients want to connect, uh, you can pass traffic via the Azure VPN or an express route. Or you can simply uh, do a server redirect uh, to reroute the traffic around the VPN. Now, in this case here, um, it goes back to some of the scenarios where the hybrid model makes sense if you're experiencing random peaks in traffic or known times where the traffic is going to peak and you want to spill over um, some of that usage into the cloud. Or, um, in some instances, you'd want to make sure that all on-premise applications are available at any given time but without opening a second data center and having those costs. So the applications are replicated here in Azure in the event of a disaster at the on-premise location. So it uh, replaces that two data center model. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. And this, this again helps to, keep, helps to keep the cost down for the expansion of, again, a small company or even a large organization. Well, just that, it's just then you have a theoretically unlimited uh, room to grow for spikes and uh, peaks and valleys, which mm -hmm. is just a better model. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, let's see. 
The next slide here, we're talking about achieving uh, high availability with the VLM Azure or Virtual Loadmaster for Azure. Essentially what we're doing um, for high availability and the way we maintain that for your critical applications is by conducting a health check between the Kemp load balancers themselves, right? So we do a health check between the load balancers and we also do a health check against the backend application, whether it's uh, Link or Exchange or SharePoint or any other type of, of web-based application that you're running in the cloud or on-prem, okay? If there's an event here, um, for example, a server fails or the load master fails, because we have the health check and the configuration is syncing between the two devices, the secondary uh, Kemp load balancer receives all of those connections, all of those ac active connections, and maintains that connectivity for those end clients. Now, the end client never knows that anything happened on the back end. The only person that knows is the one that's receiving the alert that uh, th there's a server down or there's a Kemp um, device down. In this deployment uh, model here, we're going to talk about high availability with um, GEO, and this term is used for geographic load balancing. And there's two, or there's a couple ways that um, you can utilize uh, GEO load balancing here. And one is that if you already have data centers around the globe, or you're planning on opening um, a data center in one location and utilizing Azure Cloud in another, we have the ability to recognize inbound IPs and where they're coming from and actually maintain those IPs within that region, right? So uh, maybe you're headquartered in New York and you want to keep all the traffic that's local to the East Coast in that, in that data center. And that's something we can accomplish with the geo load balancer. The second piece is that if one of those data centers fail or if um, the, the main location goes down, what we're actually able to do is start rerouting those connections to the next available or next best available location, okay? And in this instance, you'll see that the Loadmaster has used uh, the geo functionality to basically shift the connections over to the second um, dairy location, okay? There's a health check between the geo load balancers to make sure that those are up and running. There's a health check between the Kemp load balancers themselves to make sure those are up and running. And then also we're health checking the applications down below. And this is really um, part of the resiliency factor when we're talking about high availability. You know, on, on that, Dave, the... Um the geo awareness is that just with your uh, your on-prem data centers, or is there any kind of awareness relative to within the Azure Cloud? Uh, it's used directly in the Azure Cloud, um, and it's also used uh, for hybrid models as well. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So we're definitely using. Uh, if it's all cloud, then then we're not using any part of the geo functionality. But if we're doing any kind of hybrid, or if we want to uh, do a little more custom work. You know, maybe it's an emerging market and you want to say all the IPs from this emerging market, why don't you go ahead and use Azure and our existing market will maintain in the data center. Those are some ways that you can kind of use the geo to help scale your, your organization. Got it, thanks. Okay. And so here you see this is kind of the, the uh, graphic here as we're going through it where um, the client has switched off of a, a different load balancer here where this one has failed, um, for example, and all of the connections are seamlessly switched over to the secondary load balancer for Azure, and it maintains those uh, connections for the end clients. Some of the advantages um, that we offer, uh, now to kind of take a step back with the Azure and load balancing, Microsoft does have a load balancer in Azure, but it is extremely limited to the point where it's not really used for much of anything. Um, it's just kind of there. And that, that's why I mentioned earlier that Microsoft uh, was really ecstatic about us, uh, about Kemp, 
um, building a load balancer for Azure, a full-fledged Layer 7 um, load balancer um, for their Azure cloud piece. Uh, it gives their clients a lot more options than, than what their current offering was. So uh, some of the advantages here are that we have both Layer 4 and Layer 7 load balancing. Um, of course, there's high availability, um, hybrid traffic, which we've been talking about um, during the presentation here. And then we're also able to load balance across Azure VNet regions. Uh, we can do scheduling methods or, or different uh, ways of load balancing, if you will, for Layer 4 and Layer 7. We have server persistence. Uh, and essentially what this is is making sure that a client that's already connected to a server um, stays on that server, right? Even if they lose a connection, we can definitely send them back to, to that one server just to maintain their session there. Uh, we also do SSL termination. Again, uh, this is to speed up the application. It's also used uh, in Layer 7 if you want to decrypt a packet, um, maybe add some security in there, inspect those elements, or even rewrite the inbound uh, packets or headers. Uh, we also do uh, VM resource availability and awareness, uh, and then support basic tier uh, virtual machines, and we also support standard tier uh, virtual machines. Okay. Now some of the uh, next slides here are going to show where you can access uh, information and uh, and also uh, where you can download the actual Azure load balancer from here. You, you can actually see it's on the VM depot here. Uh, and then we also have some videos uh, on YouTube that are step-by-step -step, um, videos for you to watch as well. Um, here we have some of the resources that are available as well, and we'll go ahead and, and email this to you um, at the end of the at the end of the show here, um, so that you have all this information available to you. So a couple items here that uh, we should uh, all look forward to uh, after the, the meeting here. And, and um, one of them is actually go ahead and, and go to Microsoft Azure. Again, I said it's available um, within the cloud there. And uh, you can go ahead and download a free trial. Okay. And then we also have, uh, you can actually download two of them for high availability purposes um, um, for, and for testing as well. And I think uh, we're ready for Doug here. Yeah, thanks, David. Yeah. Yeah, thanks a bunch, David. Appreciate that. Yeah, my name is Doug Fuller here, and I, I'm with Accelerus. Um, previous to Accelerus, I was at Microsoft for a number of years in a variety of different roles, most recently as a data center technology specialist. So part of that um, involved uh, covering uh, the Windows Azure uh, offering as well. So I'm here to talk a little bit about Windows Azure, kind of what it is, what it's all about, you know, uh, how you can leverage it for your for your uh, enterprise or your small business, uh, and, and, and focus also on, some, on the storage piece, right, and uh, specifically the storage simple device that Microsoft uh, has available today, right. So, I mean, Azure, I mean, Azure is kind of a big thing, right? There's a number of different things that it can do, but primarily, if you break it down to a very high level, right, it's 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 really a an infrastructure as a service and a platform as a service. Now, what does that really mean, right? I mean, infrastructure as a service really means, um, you know, compute, storage, and networking uh, resources, right, hosted in a Microsoft data center, right? And so that you, for example, you could have, move a virtual machine to the to the Microsoft uh, Azure cloud and use it as if it were um, just part of your, your your inventory, right? And, and this is, again, very high level, right? But also it's a platform as a service, right? And what does that really mean? I mean, it's it's a, a place you can you can go to build applications, right? SQL Server, database uh, functionality, right? Again, uh, storage, networking, uh, compute uh, resources, all up there uh, to build applications on top of, right? So it's, just, it's really a platform to build on using a, a variety of tools, right? Not just Microsoft Technologies, but also, um, you know, Perl, Java, uh, Python, et cetera. So again, this is extraordinarily high level, but uh, just, just to, from, a, from a, uh, an overview perspective, you have the Windows Azure Cloud, 
you build your applications on it, you host your, your, your infrastructure on it, customers can access it. It's a very seamless experience. And I mean, it's, it's, there's no evidence or there's no, uh, it's not apparent to anyone who's accessing your application that it's not hosted um, by you or by another provider. It's just a very seamless experience. Then you have the, the, the admin in charge of coordinating all those resources. Right, so uh, again, just an, another quick look here at some of the, the capabilities. And this slide, I know this slide's a bit of an eye chart, but it, I want to kind of stress just the, 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 the depth and the, the uh, variety of services that Windows Azure really is uh, comprised of, right? VMs, services, websites, mobility, I mean, all these things are in there, right, or available as part of Azure. But today we're going to focus more on the on the on the storage bit, right? I mean, because the Azure messaging has kind of been a little bit, uh, you know, maybe not quite so clear. I mean, what what is Azure, right? How do I start using it? I don't know. It's kind of confusing, right? But one of the the, the very easiest ways to start leveraging the Azure cloud is just by taking advantage of some of the um, of the storage capabilities that exist there, right? So I mean, storage today, you know, you have a it's storage it's growing. The data is growing by leaps and bounds. I mean, it's this huge explosion of data. Uh, in a variety of different types of industries and different sizes of companies, right? So uh, being able to leverage the Windows Azure Cloud to store some of that data is an extremely extremely powerful and easy thing to do, right? And and there's really not a whole lot to it, right? I mean, it, of course, some of the benefits are it's, it's always there, right? You don't have to think about it. You don't need to go uh, back anything up. Uh, or, or worry about tape delivery or anything of that sort, right? It's just a, another place to keep your data. And it's, it's all kinds of data, unstructured data, uh, you know, production data, videos, images, or whatever, any, anything you'd use storage for, right? The Azure Storage Service can be, can be leveraged uh, quite easily. And just a, a quick look here at some of the costs of storage, right? I mean, inter enterprise storage has never really been a cheap thing historically, right? And just uh, taking a peek at a at a comparison to store 100 terabytes of data, right? All the all the things that go along with that, you have, you have to buy this the the actual SAN, right? And the maintenance services that go along with the the backup, right? The tape a library and the tape storage, all all those other things add up in a quick hurry. All right, so over over a three year time frame, you can see here it's you know anywhere between a million and two point three million dollars to back up 100 terabytes of data. Where if you use the Windows Azure uh, storage service and the Store Simple device, which we'll talk about here in just a little bit, you can reduce that three year cost down to uh, a relatively small three hundred thousand dollars for that same 100 terabytes of data. All right, so what is Store Simple? All right, Store Simple is a company that, that Microsoft acquired, or a technology, I should say, that Microsoft acquired a few years ago, right? Uh, and it, it really is a, 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 a cloud integrated storage device. And again, just to, just to quickly look at um, some of the challenges that we, you know, we already talked about with storage, right? You have your primary storage, your archive storage, all the, all the, the traditional storage uh, components can be really just distilled down to one device that you have on premises in your rack, in your closet, or your data center that's connected to um, the Microsoft Azure cloud. And it's, it's, it's basically an, an, an iSCSI device that uh, handles all your day-to-day -day storage requirements at a, at a much uh, reduced cost, all right? So inside that device, there are a couple of technologies. I mean, it's quite. It's actually quite, kind of a simple uh, device. It's a again, it's an iSCSI SAN, um, which has both traditional spinning hard drives as well as uh, uh, solid-state drives uh, built into it. And one of the great things about having that solid-state uh, piece there is that you, you, most of your active data can is well is stored on that on those super fast solid-state uh, drives. Your less active data, you know, it's it's uh, on the on the traditional rotating uh, hard drive tier, and then the older, less active data on and your backups, etc., are really just handed off to the Azure cloud. So it's not a I mean, you 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 plug it in, you configure a few things through the, the little management portal, and that's kind of all you got to do. It's it's really it truly is a no-brainer kind of device. It's hard to imagine a simpler way to 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 really in, in, establish or in, in increase your 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 storage uh, 
infrastructure, right? So this, this here is just a look at, uh, you know, we mentioned data is growing incredibly fast, right? And, and the, the, the CapEx that you needed to keep up with that data, right? Buying all those new SANs, buying those additional expansion modules, those extra storage devices, just to keep up with that data. Uh, can really get uh, kind of cost prohibitive or, it, it, over time, right? Just the, you know, with, the, with the explosion of data that just is happening these days. Um, but with the uh, with the store simple device, really, there's not a whole lot uh, you need to worry about because you have that Windows Azure Cloud a, a, as the, as the back end, right? So you you're, again, your 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 active data is stored on site, less active data, backups, etc., are, are handed off to the uh, to the or in the in the Azure Cloud. And again, all kinds of data, right? Whatever the data you, you know, whatever you're talking about, whether it's, it's documents, whether it's a database information, whether it's, you know, BI, uh, OLAP cubes, or whatever that data might be, VMs, right? VMs take up a tremendous amount of space. Um, and the store simple just really just seamlessly uh, manages that, uh, that uh, transition from on premises fast active data to less active data in the cloud. And Doug, well, I want to make a point here too. It's not just that uh, your capex comes down. It's uh, when you give the Azure storage, you got to understand that that is that is storage that is enterprise level storage that is enterprise level managed. That's right. Levels that are su super cost prohibitive. So. Oh yeah. Oh, absolutely. No, that's very great point, David. Thanks for bringing that up. No, it's very true. And the, and the Microsoft data centers, they're 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 you know, they're they're they have data centers all over the world, right? And they're building more all the time, and they're expanding them. And it's it's really uh, the the biggest companies in the world hold you know host their data there, right? Host their VM, their production infrastructure in some of those those locations. And it's replicated. It's always backed up. It's always available. Um, so it's really in, truly enterprise class uh, storage or enterprise class uh, availability as well. And this is just a, a little quick peek at uh, what a couple of different company, a couple of customers are saying about uh, the store simple device and, uh, and Windows Azure, right? And, and you can see there's a number of different uh, ways you, uh, or, you know, types of data that different companies leverage the uh, the solution uh, to accomplish, right? So there's a number of different scenarios where the store simple plus Windows Azure storage uh, could make a lot of sense. Uh, another just a uh, couple. Analyst perspectives on the store simple uh, scenario. And it's, it's really it's really been well received and, and much liked by companies that have, that have uh, acquired and deployed it. We certified a number of different uh, certifications and awards that uh, it's won over the years. And again, it's not just Microsoft Technologies, right? I mean, it's certified for VMware, right? And a, a variety of different uh, of a uh, well recognized. Uh, Companies have awarded uh, the solution with the with highest accolades simply because it's 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 a very cost-effective way to get uh, enterprise class storage without with very little effort. And again, I mentioned it is a cloud integrated architecture, right? You have your 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 seamless iSCSI integrate. You, you you rack it and you plug it in, and basically the rest of it uh, kind of takes care of itself. And, and, and uh, here's just a look at a scenario where the uh, the disaster recovery plan or strategy would uh, it could be you know involve the use of a store simple device. So you, you basically have your cloud snapshots. You know you have data center one, snap your data up to the Azure cloud. If something should happen to data center location one, it's extraordinarily easy just to snap that back to data center uh, number two. Right, so you're, you're instantly almost instantaneously back. Uh, Back online with very little interruption in in, uh, in service. Now, of course, there's you know different uh, backup disaster recovery plans or, or strategies have different uh, you know recovery time objectives, etc. Um, but uh, using this ad, they store simple device with the Azure Cloud with uh, cloud snapshots can reduce even the most optimistic plan, uh, disaster recovery plans to literally just a just a, a matter of seconds or minutes. And here's this a uh, a little diagram here that kind of shows the, the the complexity and the the you know the inefficiency of traditional storage, right? Again, you have your primary volume, you snap it off, you replicate it, or you send it off to tape, 
and then you have to drag that tape out to uh, some off-site uh, location. But uh, with the cloud snapshots, it's, it's very simply, you create a snapshot, it's in the cloud, in the Azure cloud. If something goes sideways, you simply just mount that cloud to your backup location. It's really, really easy. Really quick, integrated, and you can finally get rid of those tapes. And I, no one likes to deal with tapes. That I've, I've, ever, I've never met somebody who enjoys dealing with, a, with, with tapes. So getting those tapes out of your life is, is, is just a tremendous benefit, and, uh, and you can just focus your efforts elsewhere. Yeah, just to, again, another look at some of the a cost comparison between traditional storage versus the, the hybrid storage uh, model with uh, Store Simple and, and Windows and Azure. So for 50 terabytes of data, you can see all the, the, the costs add up real quickly, traditionally, right? You have to pay for your, you know, your, your, your SANs, your, your, you know, your arrays, you got to buy your, you know, your, your tape libraries, you have to buy your, you know, encryption appliances or whatever else you, that, that you included as part of your on-premises traditional storage architecture really, truly is, is distilled down to simply the Store Simple device, and the Windows Azure Cloud at, at, a, at a much, much, much reduced rate. You can see here the CapEx on the traditional side, and this is just one example, right? But $375,000 as capital expenditure, it's kind of a lot of money. With the, at, with the store simple device, you really have no CapEx here because you get the device as part, EA customers can get that device as, as, a, as part of the initial acquisition. If, if you buy a minimum of, of, uh, of, of storage, Azure storage, the device comes as free as part of the package, which it's really a generally a, a, the, the, well, a couple different kinds of devices, which we'll look at shortly, but uh, anywhere from $75,000 and up just for that device itself, and you get that free. Again, just a, just a, a look at again, another cost comparison, too, over the, over the course of, of three years, um, traditional storage versus the, uh, the store simple Windows Azure combo. And, and it just kind of speaks for itself. But it, it's really, truly a, a no-brainer um, decision, in my opinion, when it comes to, uh, to you know, taking advantage of the Microsoft current offers as well as you know, getting some of your, your uh, storage infrastructure very simplified and, and moved out to the, uh, the, the, the Azure cloud. And this uh, this current offer here is that this is the, the ASAP offer, which is Azure Storage. I believe it's Azure Storage Accelerate Program, right? <clears throat> uh, if you do spend uh, fifty thousand dollars for fifty terabytes of, of Windows Azure Storage, you get that uh, the seven seventy twenty appliance, the, the Store Simple appliance, uh, at no cost. And again, if you if you have a little greater uh, need for some additional storage, you can. Uh, expand that to the hundred thousand dollars for hundred terabytes of storage. You get the same appliance, but the economics just really uh, uh, make an incredible amount of sense, in my opinion. So, just as a quick summary of the, the Store Simple uh, Azure offering, right? It's just a, a way to really consolidate your 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 primary archive and backup and disaster recovery all under one uh, very easy to manage, very easy to use, simple uh, uh, strategy. And, and save a whole bunch of money in the meantime, right? So your total cost of ownership really uh, is dramatically uh, reduced once you have moved to this uh, platform. Now, and the store simple uh, story is just one of the, you know, one example of, of um, how you could leverage the, the Azure cloud to, um, as, as part of your, your storage strategy, right? I mean, and, and one of the common customer concerns is, well, I've got all this data. I've got hundreds of terabytes of data. It's going to take me weeks, maybe months or longer to upload that through a traditional, you know, maybe a T1 or even a little quicker connection up to the Windows Azure Cloud. Well, Microsoft has this new import-export uh, service where customers can uh, copy their data to an external hard drive, uh, and that's physically shipped to a... Microsoft Data Center, then uploaded to the Azure Cloud, and that the hard drives are returned to the customer. So that can really, truly re reduce dramatically the time it takes to get your production data uh, up in the Azure Cloud, right? So that's a that's a relatively new service that's been asked for for customers for 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 many many years. So finally, this is a reality now. So no longer you need to wait weeks, months, or longer to get your data that you want to protect up there to the Azure Cloud. 
There's also the Windows Azure or Microsoft Azure backup service where you can either use uh, uh, the, the Azure Cloud as a, uh, a backup location using a System Center Data Protection Manager, which is, again, that's a, a different product here, but it's part of the Microsoft System Center suite, which uh, is really great for backing up your SQL servers, your SharePoint servers, exchange environments, etc. cetera. Um, you, you just simply point the, the backup location. It's a, the, the disk to dip, disk to disk to tape solution is now uh, also a disk to disk to cloud solution. So all your, your enterprise data can now be backed up directly to the, the Microsoft uh, Azure Cloud uh, using either you know, the System Center Data Protection Manager or simply by using the, the Azure um, backup agent and, and have using traditional um, backup you know, built-in Windows Server backup utilities to simply back up to the cloud, right? So there's two different options there. Again, very easy to use, extremely uh, cost efficient as well. So I'll go ahead and pass it back to, to Dave Potorak here for some final words. Hey, yeah, thanks so much, uh, both David and Doug. I hope you guys can see that um, uh, both of these technologies, the, the camp, uh, layer seven and switch, the, the, the store simple device and Windows Azure storage, they provide cost effective, snagless ways to, to leverage this cloud. Um, uh, technology and uh, not, you know, break the bank while, uh, while you're doing it. So uh, we're excited about both of these. Uh, we're keen to help you uh, get uh, further faster with them. So uh, you can reach us at this number here at info at a seller at any time. Uh, we will post this. Uh, you'll find this on our YouTube channel uh, as well as the deck to download and links to uh, the material. So I just want to say thanks to uh, David and Doug for, for a great presentation. You bet, Dave. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Thanks, Dave. Yeah, thank you for having me. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye.